newcomers, regulars. This is great. This is great. Well, this evening we're doing, uh, it is a French film, but it was shot in Canada. For you Canadians, that's terrific. It's a kid. Uh, Le Fille de Jean is the French title. Uh, the director is, is from France. His name is Philippe Loire. He is an award-winning writer-director from Paris. He began his career in the 1990s with mostly comedies, but also all these comedies had underlying social themes. In the early 2000s, he began to tackle dramas with relevant issues, working with some of France's leading actors. Among his most notable films prior to A Kid, was the multiple award winning and highly critically and audience acclaimed film entitled Welcome. It was about the plight of a young uh, immigrant, young, immigrant young man uh, while he tries to get from Calais to uh, Great Britain and he decides he's going to swim the English Channel. Uh, but I won't divulge what happens. It is a touching, it's a very touching story, a wonderful story. Uh, about coming of age and uh, all that comes with it. So I highly recommend uh, the uh, welcome is the title of the film. Getting to a kid, uh, it's a, a also a coming of age in a way, identity, family relations, missing bodies, secrets told with drama and graceful humor. It's a finely wrought family drama that's at once new and familiar, immersive and deeply poignant with complex issues tied to the interconnecting themes of masculinity, family, paternity, and filial devotion. And it unfolds in layers, as we've seen, that all become apparent toward the end. Now, you know, you're all aware of the end, so it's, it's really getting there. This is about the journey uh, you know, it begins in mystery. We meet Matthew in Paris. Uh, he's 33. Uh, he's separated. He's working in marketing. He receives the call that is uh, the father he never knew had died and that there's this package that was left for him. Uh, and then he has two stepbrothers. Surprise, you've got a family in Canada. Uh, and he decides, he decides to go to Montreal and attend the funeral at, uh, and and uh, pick up the package. When he gets there, uh, you know, Pierre, Pierre says to him, why did you even bother to come? I could have sent it to you. It wasn't necessary for you to come. And he's reluctant to let him meet the brothers. You know, now the mystery starts, where the secrets seem to come out. Uh, and But he takes him in with his family. Instead of staying in a hotel, he's invited to stay with Pierre and his family, his wife, and he's got a daughter living there with, with her twins. Uh, and it's, it's uh, you know, as he falls into it, he's liking this family more and more, as we see, as the film goes on. Uh, but before the funeral, Matthew wants to meet his two siblings. One's a lawyer in Toronto, we learn, the other an ex-motorbike champion who now sells them. Uh, Pierre also tells him that no one is aware of his existence. This is really the key to the fact that we're, we're now wondering what's going on. Uh, and so why bother to let them know who he is? It might stir up trouble, basically. Along with all the information Pierre gives Matthew, uh, what his father presumably left him, that painting of a young boy, uh, is interesting telling him it really wasn't worth his crossing the Atlantic for, yet it is, it turns out to be what one of two, one of two Chekhov devices in the film. Uh, and and uh, for those of you who don't know by now what my Chekhov devices are, you know, Chekhov used to say, if you show me a gun in the first act, it better go off in the second because he had once seen a play where there was a gun on the wall and he was waiting for that gun to come off the wall and somebody to use it. Unfortunately, it never came off, so he didn't like the play. And uh, he said, so from now on, if you show me a gun in the first act, it better go off in the second. Anyway, the painting is one of two Chekhov devices. Uh, and the picture of the young boy will eventually reveal a great deal of meaning toward the end of the film. 
It, and when Matthew calls Pierre and tells him uh, that the picture is worth a small fortune and insists that he keep it, uh, that his father didn't even leave a note to him and he wants to give it to the family, Pierre protests and tells him they don't even know about it. They don't know about the painting. Again, another mystery. And that he can give it to charity if he wants. And then Matthew decides to go and see his brother Sam, or his presumed brother Sam, as we know. At the store, he's informed that, you know, uh, uh, Sam and his brother are going to the lake where their father disappeared uh, because Ben wants to get a rabbi and hold the wake. Now Matthew learns, I'm Jewish. Where did that come from? And uh, so it's a whole new awakening and it's confusing Matthew to hell. Uh, and uh, though not a religious family, which is why it's quizzical that one of the brothers all of a sudden is turning religious, as the other brother says. Uh, but uh, Ben, Pierre also invites Matthew to his home, as I said. And there, And then his wife, Matthew's wife, uh, Angie discusses with Matthew that she loves mystery novels, and it turns out that Pierre is also a writer. Uh, Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew is also a writer, and he's written a mystery book. Uh, so there's an affinity there between the two of them, and he also meets their divorced daughter, Bettina, with her two young daughters, uh, and uh, something will develop there as well, which turns out to be very dicey. But anyway, as Pierre also warns Matthew to tread lightly, we watch Matthew try to come to terms with the foreign family he never knew, and certainly the siblings he would not have hoped for. These are not the siblings he would have hoped for. Failing that, he insists on going with Pierre and his stepbrothers to search for their father. During this search for Jean, Pierre relates how Jean received a call from his mother before he was born. But Jean said he couldn't do anything because he was married with two kids. And when he was born, Jean was going to go to Paris, but called Pierre and chickened out. So, you know, Pierre has told him this story about Jean and why he never showed up and why he disappeared. Also, when things end up empty at the lake, they never find the body, the two brothers behave less like their namesakes, Benjamin and Samuel, and more like Cain and Abel, as they get drunk and fight over money, and Ben reveals there is no legacy without a body. Pierre also gives Matthew the stethoscope. Aha, check off device number two. Check off device number two that belonged to his father. He says it belonged to Jean and he wants to give it to him. But if we look closely at the picture Angie showed Matthew at their home, it is Pierre wearing the red stethoscope. If you remember when she shows him the pictures, he's wearing the red stethoscope, that which, you know, now Jean looks. The picturesque Quebec landscape sharply contrasts with what the men are looking for underneath that calm mirrored surface of a lake where turbulence and mystery lie deep below the surface. It serves as a kind of metaphor for where the story itself is headed with Matthew contrasting his not easy, but also not all that complicated family life back home with his son who he loves dearly uh, and misses, and his wife is understanding, his ex-separated wife is understanding, he's not divorced, so, and uh, the apparently, also contrasts with the apparently happy family of Pierre, but even there we find discordance, when Matthew and Bettina enjoy a night out with her friends, she gets hounded by Sam, uh, Matthew's presumed half-brother, who butts Matthew in the nose for defending her. She tells Matthew that she and Sam were once lovers for five years in secret. Another secret comes out, but he left her and she moved to Vancouver. And during that quiet moment, they are sharing back at the house. She also tells him about the father of her children who doesn't even know them, who doesn't even know them. 
uh, interesting little coincidences going on here. And in a tender moment in which things look like they are headed in a certain direction, uh, it leads elsewhere. When, Be when Bettina realizes that the painting in his room looks familiar and how her father always admired it. Now, Matthew, the bulbs are going off in Matthew's head. And when she went to buy it, was surprised at how expensive it was. So Jean ended up with it. And Matthew begins to start believing the story, the story Pierre gave him isn't entirely true. The next morning, Angie tells him about Pierre's cancer, asking him to talk to Pierre about getting radiation to help him. Matthew asks to see the pictures again and even asks Angie if that in the one of Pierre and Jean, if the red stethoscope is Pierre's, this, and, and here it all goes, comes, begins to come together. When he tells Pierre he's not feeling well, which is an excuse, to get him alone, Pierre takes the, the stethoscope from him. He offers him the stethoscope. And, and I love the way Pierre looks at it as he takes it. And we get that moment of reckoning. That is the moment of reckoning. As Pierre listens to Matthew's heart, listens to Matthew's heart, the stethoscope becoming a link between the two of them from heart to heart and that Pierre was the one who fell in love with his mother. And on the drive to the airport, Angie looks at Matthew through the rearview mirror and her face seems to say it all. If you get that shot when she looks and she's looking at Matthew and she's looking at Pierre and she's looking back and it all comes together in her mind. At the airport, when we see the family all together, and Pierre tells Matthew that he will take care of himself. Now he will take care of himself because now he also has a son as well who cares about him. And we are left to ponder it all as he leaves. Uh, you know, I love all of this, you know, all this mystery, how it all comes together. You know, it's all, you know, and, and Jean says, you know, Pierre tells him why he couldn't leave and what, what happened. I especially feel badly for Bettina, but maybe contented with having a brother who is more permanent than a lover. You know, now maybe, maybe she feels better. I have a brother rather than a lover that I can't depend on. Uh, while the film is not a mystery in the traditional sense, it is more interested in closely observing the behavior of these individuals and then placing that behavior within a wider, within a wider familial and social context and through the natural contrasts that emerge between them all, exploring several related questions, the roles of fathers and sons, the difference between men and women, especially in raising children, the importance of where you're from and who you are or might turn out to be related to for your own sense of self, who you're related to for your own sense of self. With a gently paced rhythm, the director carefully takes his time, letting us get to know these characters and coming to grips with their souls. Uh, using the great outdoors of Quebec, <clears throat> excuse me, brings a freshness to a film with mainly interior settings. I mean, we're either in, in Pierre's house, we're, we're in the cabin, we're in the store. It's a lot of interior settings. <clears throat> and uh, while scenes happening inside range in mood from almost sweet to quite cynical, the lake setting brings out the wilderness in a much more profound sense than the literal physical one. We see much, you know, it is a wilderness in which Matthew is treading. It's not just the lake. It's a wilderness of getting to know who are these people? Who are these supposed brothers? Who is Jean? The use of biblical names takes on meaning as well in this film. Pierre or Peter, Matthew uh, and Matthew, along with Benjamin and Samuel. <clears throat> so we have Peter and Matthew. We have uh, two disciples. Uh, we have Benjamin and Samuel, two Hebrew uh, prophet, one, one the son 
of, was the son of David? I forget, the son of Saul. Uh, but anyway, Benjamin and Samuel, and especially Jean or John, Matthew's presumed father, and the French title itself comes through now, Le Fille de Jean, the son of John. He was, in a sense, born not knowing his true father, and now he does. When the film debuted in 2016, uh, the actor, Pierre Deladonchamp, was a promising newcomer. And uh, as Matthew who discovers that his search is not necessarily about him, he is, and he has since, has since become quite successful in France. In fact, he, he is one of, he's becoming one of their fastest growing stars. And as the film progresses, it's Gabriel Arcan, Gabriel Arcan, who is a popular Canadian actor, who becomes the true hero of the movie. His sullen character becomes more human as the film continues, more wise and understanding of his own frailties, finding redemption with the son he now knows. Um, you know, it's it's a beautifully done film, and I love the characters, uh, especially uh, Pierre. Uh, you know, we we see him. Uh, you know, he's a homeopathic doctor. Uh, he believes in natural cures. Uh, he's a giving doctor, as we see uh, during the course of the film treating. He treats one particular patient. Uh, and uh, he, he is, you know, in spite of this, this hiding the secret all along, when he finally gets to know Matthew, he grows towards him and is happy that he now has a son as well as two daughters. Uh, and we have a family. Matthew has a family. He goes home, and as he, you know, as he's going home, he knows that, as he said, you'll come and see me, or we'll come back. He'll bring his son to meet uh, his father. He has a grandfather. His son now has a true grandfather. Uh, I think it's it's all, you know, it is a very family-oriented movie, and I thought wonderfully done. It is allegorical. Uh, and all the, the names and the meanings uh, involved in the film. Uh, so uh, that's my take on it. And now I'd like to hear uh, what you all feel about it, uh, how you, you know, your comments and uh, whatever you have to say about it. And uh, let's, who's going to start? I see that smile coming, Jackie. <laughs> So dive right in there. <laughs> I was going to raise my hand, but why bother? Yeah. We, we, we liked it. And I have to be honest, for me, I'm not so sure about Larry, but I liked the two wives the best, to be honest. I love Pierre, but I yeah. loved Matthew's wife and I love Pierre's wife because so often the films, particularly recently, the women tend to be more shrewish. And I thought they were wonderful. I thought they were understanding, insightful, deeply understanding. I loved that she she really did guess. She knew that Pierre was his father. And, and I loved how she handled it. So yeah. I we both liked it a lot. Yeah. And, and honestly, that was part of it is I loved how the two wives handled the situation. And I also liked that the brothers really were kind of putzes, to be honest with you. Oh, you absolutely. Didn't want them anyway. <laughs> no, he realized, wait a minute, why did I come here? You know, it was just, you know, it, it just, it just, it, 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 and happily, you know, for him, discovering and not his brothers, I think was the best, the best gift he could get. But I love the painting. The painting was ab absolutely, you know, it was about the lost son. I mean, it was just, and that's probably what enchanted uh, Pierre was this little boy looking, you know, it, it, he could imagine it was probably Matthew and, uh, you know, which it becomes in the end. Uh, so I thought that was very touching. Yeah, Karen. Um, Jackie, I agree with you about the, uh, the two women, the two wives. I was a bit confused at the beginning because I obviously realized that Matthew was separated and yet it was a very loving relationship yes. between the two of them. So it confused me a little bit. Are they separated or aren't they separated? It, it, right at the beginning, I just wasn't sure. One thing that also has stuck with me is the title. Why it's not a translation 
of the title. It's just called A Kid, but that's not the title of the movie. What would be the reason for that? It's very simple. The stupidity of uh, American distributors. They always change the title for whatever reason. They don't like they don't like the French titles. I mean, they don't like any foreign title. And if you look at if you look at a lot of uh, uh, foreign language films, they always change the title. Uh, I always have a problem with it as well. I don't know. You know, they felt the kid is a more you know it's a more to them would be a more ambiguous title. Whereas the son of Jean, you know, maybe they felt maybe whoever's distributing the film said, well, it sounds religious. They're going to think it's a religious film. Uh, you know, they they presume uh, they stay second guess the audience that they're selling to. And mm -hmm. they think a kid is a more wide open title for an American audience as opposed to the son of John, uh, which would sound more religious to them. It's interesting, though, because. Le fille de Jean is the son of Jean, Jean right. but he wasn't the son of... Yeah. No, and that's the mystery. That's why if you're... That, look, let me tell you something. Maybe that's the other why. Thing that the other thing distributors do is underestimate the intelligence of the audience. Okay? They always do that because... Le Fille de Jean also sets it up as, a, as you're watching it, you're presuming he's John's son. Okay, or Jean, Jean's son. And as the picture reveals itself, we learn it's not. So it's it's a very mysterious title in that way. You know, it's if you told me it was the son of John, but he's not his son. But yet it turns out that way. And there, you know, to me, that's the beauty of it. The French, that's the beauty of the French title is to set up for us thinking, okay. During the course of the beginning of the film, we suppose that Matthew's two brothers are Ben and Sam. Okay, there's no reason not to in the way in the setup. But then, as things go along, we begin to suspect something's awry. You know, Pierre says, "Don't tell them." Uh, we're seeing things going on, uh, and we, we we're never quite clear until until they get back from the lake. And that's when Matthew begins to suspect there's something there's something amiss. Uh, as, and especially when he's talking to Bettina. And when he and Bettina come home that night and they share, they're sharing th themselves with each other and uh, they go to say, you know, he goes to say good night. It's like, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing, you know, and then, you know, because especially because she looks at the painting and she says to him, that's odd. My father loved that painting and wanted to buy that painting. And it was very expensive. And it wound up, I guess it wound up with John and it got to Matthew's head. That's what gets into Matthew's head. Uh, so that's why. But naming it a kid becomes such a, a more ambiguous title. It's like, okay, we're focusing on the kid. We're focusing on Matthew. It, it puts the focus on Matthew as, as, as opposed to the focus on the whole thing, on the mystery, on what's going on. Uh, and that's why you get that change in title. But for the most part, it's because they underestimate the audience and because they want to put a, uh, another title on it. They want to own the film. Uh, it just becomes, it's just the, at their discrepancy. There's no real answer is basically what it is. Uh, you can ask them, they'll, they'll tell you because, you know, it's for an American audience. We didn't think that was the right title. So they translate it for themselves. So get mad at the distributors. Not my fault. Not my fault. <laughs> Who else? Okay. Ah, Queenie, Queenie go Queenie. jump right in. I was um I was intrigued with Matthew's um persona. Uh even when he got punched and he was asked who did it, he he didn't tattle on Sam. He didn't, right. you know, he seemed to be very careful about just saying I I ran into the wrong person or he just uh, handled it so gently, I thought. Yeah, he did. He did. And and also, you know, and speaking about uh, about Matthew is when we see him at the beginning, you know, we see he works in marketing. 
He's he's working for this, uh, you know, agricultural firm, whatever it was. And uh, he also is a mystery writer. And I love the fact that he's a mystery writer because maybe that's where he starts to put two and two together. He listen, he writes mystery. So he's got to solve a mystery yeah. uh, towards the end. And that gives him the ability to maybe, you know, with the stethoscope and with the picture, he begins to put things together. He's also got the fodder for another mystery uh, novel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who's next? Rachel? <laughs> I, I thought it was okay. Um, uh, for me, it was a little melodramatic, uh, you okay. know, with the cancer and, you know, just... Um, uh, but I thought the acting was superb, um, that it was understated. The acting was superb. Um, uh, but I just found it just a little melodramatic for me. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the, 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 uh, the cliche of melodrama, uh, which, which has fallen out of style or the idea of melodrama in, in film is a trend that left us. Uh, in the 60s, as a matter of fact, when you look at it. And I find, I, I happen to like melodrama, okay? I happen to like melodrama. I think it's it's a very movie kind of uh, 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 form of film or genre, if you want to call it a genre. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very interesting uh, form because, A, yes, it uses music, but it it uh, it it tends to over dramatize in many cases. Uh, but it's a story. It becomes much more of a story. I find melodramas are real stories uh, that delve into character. And and you know, as Jackie and Karen both said, uh, melodramas tend to make women to really focus on women. Even though this film focuses more on on Jean and P uh, Matthew and Pierre's relationship, I find that the women will come out terrific for the most part. Uh, even Bettina, she's sweet, she's fun, you know, and and uh, she loves her kids. Uh, we see that too. Uh, we see they're very much, you know, we don't see the other the other sister naturally move to Australia, so we don't see them, but. Uh, you know, I like melodramatic films. I like all kinds of films, but, so you can't go by me. But uh, I, I enjoy that. And I thought this, I thought this was really, to me, was a great little film. It was like a terrific short story or a terrific novella, if you will. Uh, you know, it, it, it had a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, and as again, not necessarily in that order, because the end is another beginning. Uh, for Matthew and for the family. So I, I like that. I like that kind of thing. So who's next? Who has nobody? Come on. Somebody's got to have something to say. Sandra? Oh, there I go. There you go. Okay. Um, from the, We loved the film, my husband and I. We were watching it. We really enjoyed it. And I kept saying to him, there's something not right here. Why is it here? Why is he don't, why doesn't he want him, the boys to meet the father? And I, and I said, it's gotta mm -hmm. come out, it's gotta come out. And um, I also thought these characters in these films, they were like real people. They were people that could be people I know live in my neighborhood. There, there was nothing like Hollywoodish about them. They. And you know, people have secrets, right? And, yeah, oh, absolutely. It, you know, it's... and and yeah. the other thing, what are the deer, the dead deer? Was that symbolic? Uh, just well, it, it, it's symbolic that it wasn't the, it wasn't Jean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was they thought it was you know, and and yeah. uh, it turned Hoped out it, was. it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but the the uh, the fact that you, you know yes they they are uh, I mean this is a good character study I mean when it you is. get it he the, the way the director handles it is what I enjoy is he's a terrific director of people uh, and and when we get into Pierre's home 
it's a real house. Uh, <laughs> the way he treats the grandchildren, when he sits down at the piano with them, uh, you know, all of these things, you know, it is a real family. Uh, but yet there is this cordance just under the surface. Yes. Is the fact that he's Pierre's son, you know, so Pierre did something that he doesn't want to admit to, at least not to anybody else. Uh, and there is there is the mystery. So there is mystery that he sets up there, but uh, it concludes itself in a hopeful way. It doesn't sew it up neatly. It just concludes in a hopeful way. It, it was interesting when Pierre is telling Matthew about his supposed father, John, that it wasn't just a one night stand, that it was somebody that he really wanted to be with, but he was already married. And if things had been different, they might have ended up together like that brought out, too. And yes, it just. There was a sense, a certain realism to it, as well as just a wonderful little story. I love well, that's yeah. It's it's it is a a kind of it is a realism. It's more of a poetic realism in a yeah. sense of the story itself. Yeah, definitely. I actually found that very interesting. The way um, Pierre um, said that it was a real love story, and it would have been a love for life. He was talking about himself. He was, but yeah. he we didn't know that. Be, but he seems to be very happy with his wife. It didn't with seem Angie, with yeah. any yeah. tension between them. It looked like they had, you know, a nice family life too. So yeah. I actually found that very interesting that he was dreaming about this lost love that could have been the love, and yet yeah. he to be happy. I also had a question. Was there any significance to the granddaughters being twins? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, not that I it consider. sounds like everything has another meaning. So I'm just wondering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, only only to the extent only to the extent that they don't know their father. You know that there's a, there's a contrast, there's a parallel there that Matthew really didn't know his father. Okay. They don't know yeah. their father. Um, you know, it it it's little little these little there's there's what we call doubling or twinning going on in the film. So these twins are a symbol of twinning. Uh, you know, you that you could look at it that way. Is that why they they're, they're twins? Because we have to look at the film as a lot of twinning. Uh, yeah. between the characters. So it, that's the only the only thing I can come up with in my head uh, since you're yeah. asking. But it, now that you mention it and I'm looking at it, I'm saying maybe that's the reason he did it, you know, to, to give us a little Easter egg, what we call a little Easter egg in the film. Uh, right. Because we have several. We have several. Uh, you know, I call them Chekhov devices. The stethoscope is, you know, you showed me a stethoscope in the in the first act and it went off in the third. You showed me a, a picture in the first act and it went off in the third. So we had two, two for the price of one. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Nobody wants to say anything? Well, I guess the rest of you didn't like the film. <laughs> well, Karen, you, you're mute. I just wanted to thank you so much because even your review, I felt like I, I went through the movie again. Today, when I was thinking about the Zoom tonight, I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to remember from the movie? What did I forget from the movie? What am I going to be able to talk about? You know, blah, blah, blah. And then you went through such a beautiful presentation. I felt like I saw the movie again. So I really appreciated that. I also was expecting that there were going to be I don't know, hundreds of people on this call or something. I had no idea. We usually are. We usually get uh, like a thousand. I'm just and, surprised tonight. <laughs> and I thought, you know, what's it going to be like? But this was so intimate and so interesting. I just wanted to thank you, Jackie and Larry. And of course, Shelly and I look for, are you coming back to the movies of Del Rey? No, no, that that ended mm -hmm. back in 2019. But I am I am in Boca. I have a program at uh, you'll forgive me, Jackie, because, you know, you're not the only ones. Uh, 
<laughs> I have a program. It's in. Do you know where Sugar Sand Park is? Yeah. Yes, I get those emails. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm there. I'm there once a week. Uh, are, you, are you on anything at FAU? Yes, and I have a, a program at FAU. It's on Monday evenings, uh, and that starts up again in January. So I will send out an email about that. You'll get an email about that as well. And just so you know, Jackie, Karen, we typically do two with this, with the Zoom. We'd usually do two yes. with Shelly a month. So that gives you that gives you an opportunity to be with us too. And we usually do have more people, but it's still a pretty intimate group, I think. Uh, some yeah. people come on and they don't say anything at all. They don't even turn on their cameras. And then some people, probably the usual host of characters that you see above you are the ones who are typically here and have something to say. So you know, welcome. We really welcome you to come and say something. Yeah, yeah, and you did. You you took part. I like that. Uh, you know, and Queenie and and Sandra. You know, it's it's we got the Canadians involved tonight, uh, <laughs> which was nice. Uh, by the way, where, where in Canada are you from, Karen? I'm from where Toronto. Oh, you're Toronto. Queenie, you're Toronto also? No, I'm Sandra, from Sandra, you're in Montreal. You're in Montreal, aren't you? No, 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 I'm from Hamilton. Oh. I'm from Hamilton, Karen. Can you hear me? I'm yes. from Toronto, but Queenie I, needs to unmute. Queenie's not from Toronto. She's from north of Toronto, from Collingwood. Oh. Okay. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm from a Ham lot of Canada here. <laughs> I, I'm not far from Buffalo. I'm in between Toronto and Buffalo. Uh, Where are okay. you? Hamilton. Oh, in Hamilton. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I could ask you if you know the Silbergs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're playing geography now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just talking away. Queenie, you're mute. Queenie, you have to unmute. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh no, she, she's having trouble unmuting. Okay, uh, now there I, you are. I'm. I was born in Montreal, so I was very intrigued to see some of the scenery, and I was hoping they would tell us the name of the lake, but they just kept calling it the lake. Yeah. So must have been it's, somewhere in the Laurentians, I guess. Yeah, that's what it looked like the way they were driving up. Uh, yeah, yeah. you know, lovely country. Yeah. Uh, Has Jackie? anybody? Well, oh, I was going to say, Queenie just brought up a good point too that we actually talked about while this was on, and I totally forgot about. It, is I thought it was really interesting that they didn't give the lake a name. Mm -hmm. It just became part of the overall landscape and didn't have any personality at all. It just was what a took lake. him, what took the deer, where the hat was. And I thought that was actually, I kind of liked that, that they didn't give it. I mean, I, I know from your point of view, you would have liked to have known where it was. Yeah. But from the movie point of view, I thought it was kind of interesting that they didn't give it a name. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's true. I mean, we don't know, you know, and it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a mystery place. You know, it's the whole thing is a mystery when we think about that's it. An that's another part of the mystery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, has anybody, I, I, has anybody seen the movie Ada's Secret? A-I-D-A secret. A -I -D -A apostrophe S secret. It's interesting because it's also a story about a young man who did not know his mother. And he grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is in Canada. And later in life, he learns that his mother all along was in Montreal, Quebec. Uh. And he doesn't uh, find her until she's in a nursing home with early stage dementia. But it was just interesting. Someone else who didn't know a parent and the parent ends up in Quebec. Mm. Oh, interesting. interesting. It's a wonderful story. It happens to be about a, a distant cousin of mine. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a documentary. Yeah. Uh, Very that's... well done. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Is it is it one of the writers, the distant cousin of yours? No, the main character. Ah, oh, the blind. You can um, see everybody quickly looking it up. Yeah. Yes, I can tell he's uh, looking it up. 
It's, I may have the uh, link to it actually. I don't know if it's still active. If I, I'll, it's, well, I'll look it up now and see if I can get the link and then who would I send it to? Uh, well, I have it. I have the link if you need it. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can send it. Um, yeah. It would be interesting to have a discussion about it after you see it. Uh, yeah, I don't normally do documentaries, but then maybe I'll I'll watch it and see. Uh, I like narrative features for for discussion. Mm -hmm. They're they're much mm -hmm. they 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 tend to be much better. But uh, I will certainly I'll put the link in to the. Uh, this You'll is the link to IMDb, so then you can you can figure out from there where to. It's it's uh, it's available on Prime Video, as a matter of fact. Mm. So let me put it into the. You'll see my uncle sitting at the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> is that Isaac? Is that no. your uncle? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me put it in for everybody. If they're interested. Where's my chat? Here we go. Okay. Okay, there it is. A to Z secret. Okay, there it is. It's in the chat. Anybody can look it up. It's A to Secrets. Is this is the chat available after the Zoom? No. So can you send it to us by email? You want the, that that link? Yeah. Are you on my email? You're on my email list. Yeah. 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 What's your email, Karen? Just so Phys I. Physio Karen F like in Frank I, Z Z I O, K A R E N, at gmail dot com. Terrific. Okay, I'll send. Karen, you. just while he was doing that, I I looked it up as it it came up immediately on my phone. So okay. Okay. If, if you, if you I believe that, I have, I have the original link uh, to it. it. It's an incredible story. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it come up a while back. So uh, I will look at it again. Thank you. Thank you. So and oh, so let me get to a film coming up in two weeks: "The Monk in the Gun." It's from Nepal. Uh, and it's from, it's a recent film. It's from 2023. Uh, you know, it's known, it, it is, it takes place in Bhutan. For those of you who don't know, Bhutan's biggest export is gross national happiness. Uh, you know, it's known throughout <laughs> the world for its extraordinary beauty and its emphasis on gross national happiness. Uh, this remote Him Himalayan kingdom was the last nation to connect to the internet wow. and to television. Uh, and if that weren't enough change, the king, in fact, 60 Minutes did a whole piece on it two weeks ago, uh, which if you can get 60 Minutes on streaming, you can see the section on Bhutan. Mm -hmm. The king, you. who's very young, announced uh, shortly afterwards that he would mm -hmm. cede mm -hmm. his power to the people via their vote and a new form of government called democracy. Uh, and that's what this film is about, is what happens when a country uh, decides to become democratic. Uh, it's a, a, the film pulls off something truly bold, taking what are perhaps the most emotionally and symbolically loaded items in existence, mm -hmm. oh democracy and a gun. <laughs> Think about that, democracy and a gun and subverting their meaning completely to end on a note of, you will find out. Uh, but I will certainly, you know, I will be putting that up a few days before we're ready for it. So if you don't already know, it is the monk in the gun. And uh, Jackie, if you want to tell people, or I could, you know, they can go on your website, the Friends of Sterling Library, and you'll see it there. You'll also see other programs, which are exciting. And it's, very inexpensive to join uh, the Sterling Library for all their programs, but that's Jackie's job. Let I know, tell you. really. That <laughs> is for if you guys are considering, if you would like to become friends of the Sterling Road Library, 
it's a uh, bottom line is ten dollars a year and even though you guys are snowboarding that's the best ten dollars you're going to spend because we do shelly is the icing on the cake for the number of programs we do we do a lot in person at the library but we also still this particular library has continued to do a lot of the zooms at night so i think that's wonderful it it, it kind of encompasses everything so it's it's a wonderful organization and he's right it's listed as the sterling road friends I guess that's ten dollars USA. <laughs> oh yes, it is. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what that would that would equate to in Another forty one percent. Did you say it's five dollars Canadian? <laughs> another four, probably another forty one. Close to fifteen Canadian. Oh, fifteen. Oh, I was going to yeah. say, wow, at five dollars, it's an even yeah. better deal. But okay, <laughs> Jackie, we joined the library, but. I can't see. Can we get a library card? I'm in Canada, but I joined the library. You joined the Friends. You don't actually friends. get a no. Friends. No. Yeah, you don't actually get a library card. But if you're here six months out of the year, this is residency, and you can I'm, become a. a you, you're not. So I'm no. not really sure on that, Sandra. I can try to find out for the next time to be sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can get an online card. You know what I mean? Like to download, um, like the eBooks. But yeah. I'm not positive about actually at the library card itself. It's just to um, help help us get into films, Can into canopy. canopy. Yeah, if they can get okay. canopy. Right. Your library doesn't have it, Sandra? No. Canadian canopy. There's a barrier on the border. <laughs> There's a different. Totally different. Prime oh, video is different. Everything is different. Tubi is there different. Yeah. We just so find like this film on Tubi. But um, yeah, we watched commercials. It. American Tubi. Yeah, is, American. I found out it was is the monk and the gun on Tubi also? Well, uh, I'll tell you in a second where it is. Tubi, we can get with commercials. Yeah, well, that's all of it. Everybody. Yeah, goes. let me. Uh, there's a there's a website you can go to. It's called Just Watch. Yeah. Justwatch.com. And if you go on that, you put in the title of the film, it'll tell you where it's playing, where you can get it streaming wise. Now, I don't know if this is Just Watch Canada, but if you go to justwatch.com, uh, it should tell you, and I will see where it is. I'm I'm looking at it, and if you can't get it on Canopy, I see Hulu, YouTube, Google Play, Apple TV, and go. Fandango. They're all subscription though. So I don't know if you guys yeah, have any yeah. of those on your subscription. We just we just have we don't have too many subscriptions because we don't they would they're expensive and we don't watch them a lot. Yeah, so. yeah I understand. Yeah. yeah, it's on Hulu. Yeah, um, watch for free. You got it on Hoopla, Canopy, and that's okay. it. Okay. The canopy. We can try with the other. Yeah, we'll try. You, you might get it. You might yeah. get it. But. Uh, is there anything else I can do for you this evening? <laughs> well, there's probably a lot you can do for us, Shelly, but will you? <laughs> <laughs> Try me. <laughs> well, I just want to wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have thank a you. wonderful time. I don't know, in Canada, do you celebrate? Uh... Yes, but in October. October. Oh, okay. It's All the right. second Monday in October, and it's not as big a deal as you Americans make it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording, but we we yeah. don't have to we don't have to um, stop.